In this tutorial, we're going to talk about importing files into Octane Standalone, including Orbix, USD, FBX, and more. Hey guys, this is Alex Pierce from LightSailVR.com. If you're new to the channel, I make videos about 3D and visual effects using software like Blender, Unreal, Octane, and more. This video is a part of an Octane Standalone playlist that I'm creating right now, so check that out next. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any content. Alright, let's get to it. One of the cool things about Octane Standalone is that you can drag any type of file into Octane and it will automatically import. So if we look here, I'm going to drag in an OBJ, a few FBXs, a PNG, a JPEG, an EXR, an Orbix, and I also have an OCS, which is an Octane project file, and another FBX down here. So if I drag all of these down here, you can see it. how does it want us to import the images. I'm just going to say color for now. And now you can see it imported all of these. Over here, you see these, these buttons over here. These are now going to become important. So if you hover over these, it gives you tool tips. If I hover over this one, it tells me that it will start rendering render target nodes. This is on by default. That just means that when you click a right render target, it will start rendering. And by default, these other ones are off. So this one is object. So when this is on, if you click on an object, it will start rendering that object. So you don't have to set it up to anything to see what does this object look like. This one starts rendering materials, so if I click on this, it's not a material, but if I click on the material, it will open up the material by itself in, with a different object. So maybe a better example would be one up here. Let's look on this one. So this is a good example. This, this material is attached to this cube, but if I click on the material, it will actually just render the material here. So, And then this next one is texture. So if I click on a texture, then it will it will render just the texture. So let's go through and see what we have here. If I click on this, this is this uh, caustics blur PNG that I created, and it's just being projected onto this object here. If I click on this one, nothing happens right now. That's because this is an Orbix file. So to do this, I can go double click to go inside, and now I can see there's this whole file in here, and I can click on the render target, and I can see what this project is. This is a uh, I know what this is. This is the caustics example that they have. I'm going to go back to our scene editor, and then I'm going to click on our cube. This is a FBX. This is a different FBX, I think, another FBX. And then this is an OBJ. And then this last one, I think, is probably just empty, this camera. I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. So importing becomes very easy. You can also go up to File, Preferences, and you can change the way that your import settings will happen, as well as you can edit settings before loading new geom geometry. And then we try to drag them back in. I'm just gonna drag one. Uh, let me do this, Suzanne. It gives you the option. So you might want to enable that. You can click on any of these objects, any of these 3D models, like the FBXs or the OBJs, and you can come up here to the node inspector and you can do a few things. You can change it by coming up here, you can reload it and then you can change the settings. So you can also come up here and then say, yeah, the, the smoothing angle is not right. Or so you might have a few more options with FBX. With USD, you have some different options. And we'll look at USD here in a little bit. It, you'll notice that FBX does not have a refresh button up here and OBJ does have this refresh. Before we go any further, I want to talk about USD. For me, I will use USD as much as I can, and there's a few reasons why. So let's just take this monkey for now. This is a metal monkey. I'm using a special version of Blender called UE Blender that I created. It's basically just the latest USD developments compiled into its own Blender application. If you're interested in this, you can check in the description below. This allows me to export USD. So let me first export uh, FBX. We'll call this Metal Susan. And then I'm going to export the same thing as USD. In UE Blender, all you have to do is click on this objects button. And now we have our metal Suzanne and we have our Suzanne USD. So let's drag both of these into Octane Standalone and let's see what happens. If we click on the FBX, we can see it doesn't look correct, but the more important thing for me is that over here under the material, it does have it set up as universal material, but metallic is set to zero. So I have to manually change this to one. If I click on the USD, you can see it doesn't look messed up, which is cool, and you can see it automatically set metallic to one. Now, this is really important for me because if I'm bringing in a whole scene and I have half of my objects are metallic, I don't want to have to go through each and every one of them and figure out was this metallic or not metallic. Okay, we're back here in Blender, and let's say we want to export all four of these. So let's go to File, Export and then you can choose your way of exporting. I highly recommend Better FBX Exporter. 
And the reason is it has this separate files. And for Octane standalone, I think this is going to become even more important for me. So I'm just going to go ahead and select these, file, export, better FBX. And I'm going to choose separate FBX files. I will choose OBJ, selected objects, and then I probably will leave the rest of this as is. We'll just see what that's like. I'll make a new folder just so we're not confused. I'll call this, call this new, and then just push export. If we look in this folder, we have these objects. We'll drag these objects into Octane. Something weird is going on here. So let's see if we can figure this out. If we go up to the settings, click on that. And then we go, if we uncheck the vertex normals, let's see if that fixes the problem. All right, it does. So let's go ahead and do that for these. Okay, I've added a few modifiers, a subdivision modifier, wireframe, and a decimate modifier. And now let's go ahead and export those again. And now back in Octane, let's press the refresh. And you can see it applied that modifier. We go to the sphere, refresh, and the torus, refresh, and now it automatically updates this mesh. Okay, now let's import a USD file. Just like the others, we can actually just drag this USD file right into our node graph. And you can see it's loading all these materials. These, every white dot is a new material. Okay, so we've got this USD. Let's see what happens if we click on it. All right, so here you see we have the USD file. And you can see it brought in all the materials. And it looks like there was already a camera attached as well. So it brought in the camera information. And you can see it brought in all of these materials. So if I click on this, we can go through and see all these materials. We could also look at it in the scene outliner. So we have this attic scene and you have these different lights and then you have all these different materials. This is really great, especially if you just want to render this out. You can just come in here, find a good spot. Say this is the uh, shot you want right here. And then you can just let me go ahead and focus on the bear and then you can render this out. And now remember down here, you can select objects. Well, in this case, there's only one object. This whole scene is one object, but you can select materials. So let's say you want to change the material of this chair. So here you have the RGB image. You can adjust the image as, as you want to. You can select this material and you can change from RGB image to a color, for instance, and then you can select some, some cool color that you want. So that's all there is to importing a USD file. Just like the FBXs and others, you can come here to the settings cog and then you can change some of the information here. You can change from meters to centimeters, for instance. So depending on your file, you may need to change some of these. Okay, now let's look at this Orbix file. So I'm gonna bring in this large gallery. This is one of our products that we saved out of Octane for Blender. And you'll notice if I click on this, it actually doesn't render anything. And that's because it's its own self-contained node graph. If I double click on this, it opens a new node graph. And at the bottom, there's this render target here. If I click on this, it will start to render. If you want to be able to re render it from your main scene, what you can do is down here at render target, you can press space and search for render target out. And now you connect your render target to this render target out. And when you go back to your scene, you see now it has this pin here. Now, from my main scene here, if I click on this Orbix file, it will start rendering. And so this can be really helpful. In the next video, we're going to be talking about organizing and that sort of thing. And so this is one way that you can help get organized and render things from, from your main scene file. And now I can double click in here and I can change anything I want. I can go in here and change the materials or the textures. I can change the render pass nodes, all those sorts of things but I can always come back to my scene file and see it from up here. Okay, that's gonna wrap up this video. Make sure to subscribe, and if you like this video, make sure to check out the playlist here. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next video.